All right, guys, on today's episode, we're going to sit in again on the Vancouver Flip Out Talk Sessions. Uh, today's session is going to be with Butch Peel of Jersey Jack Pinball. Uh, so we just listened to Butch for a little bit, talk about his role at Jersey Jack Pinball and how he approaches some of the technical documentation that they provide for a lot of their different machines, as well as some sort of insider tips on dialed-in pinball that uh, Jersey Jack released earlier this year. So without further ado, here's Butch. I've been telling them thanks for what they do. You know, it's, it's a... It's a big task to put this thing on. It's it's great for these guys to put a, a place together for all of us like-minded guys to come around and enjoy one another's company, enjoy playing pinball, talking pinball, everything about it. So, you know, I, I applaud Tommy and all of your techs and everybody that's humping games up and down and elevators and stairs and, and all that. They make it so easy for guys like Jack, myself, David, to just show up here, drop, hit the ground and, and do something, you know, to to try and help out and you know with motels and all that kind of things is really really helpful for us and and it's great just to to meet with our people you know that we all love pinball i, I look at the the crowds at pinball places you you get a, a group of uh pinball guys from a pinball show and put them in a lineup somewhere I, i've been to so many different types of uh, seminars and and uh, symposia thing like that around around my other job, and and you can kind of look at the crowd and tell what they're here for, what they're what brings them to this point, brings them all together. A pinball crowd defies that. You know, you got guys with tattoos, and you got guys with mohawks, and you got little kids and boys and girls and old people and young people, you know, young women, old women, all all the groups are, are represented, and that's how I know pinball is coming back. Pinball is doing great, and and I'm really proud to be part of uh, Jersey Jack Pinball. And, and we think we've helped a little bit in, in, uh, in you know, revitalizing pinball, and that, that's really cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just start into my, my slides here. I started out back in the day, you know, how did, how did I get here kind of thing. I, I started with mine rather than end like Dave did with his. But pinball, when I started out, was just an interest. It was something I liked to do, something I enjoyed doing as a kid. We had a, a bowling alley near near my home. We used to ride our bikes to it and they had two or three pinball machines. I remember they had a Firepower and Old Bally Kiss and uh, one of the machines, if you bumped on the coin door a little bit, you could get some free credit. So, you know, when no one was looking, you know, and when our roll of quarters, our $10 roll of quarters would go so fast because we sucked at playing, obviously. But, but it was fun and it was so different. And I never got into the video game stuff so much when I was a kid. I had a friend that, that was pretty well off, you know, he, he, his parents bought him a Atari 2600, you know, the video game system when it first came out, and he used to kick my ass all the time on all those games, because he had all the patterns and everything memorized, and I, I, I just wanted, I really enjoyed something that was so different, you know, and it, you, you make a good shot in pinball, you're rewarded with it. You make a bad shot, then it's trying to recover that control and, 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 and try and fix your own mistake, and, and everything, every game's different, every ball is different. And I, I just found that a lot more appealing, a lot funner to do. So later on, uh, pinball became my hobby. I, I started uh, collecting machines, and I tell everybody, you become a pinball owner, you become a pinball repairman very quickly thereafter, because if it ain't broke, it ain't pinball. So you know, you get uh, involved with it quite a bit like that. I found I, I had a real passion for it. You know, the more I dug into it, the more things that I learned about pinball, the, the more I figured out how a game worked and all this. And this is. This is now we're fast forward back to where I'm in, around in college or so when I first got my, my first game was at Williams Contact. And I started realizing, you know, that, that I had a real passion for this. I was studying electrical engineering in uh, college at the time, and I was finding out how the things worked inside the circuit boards and all that, and it, it just became, you know, this overwhelming passion to me. Um, as I moved on and uh, showed Jack some of my passion, I guess somehow he, he recognized something in me that he wanted to have part of the company so he hired me on part-time um, on my my real job as I called it was with the Army Research Lab at White Sands Missile Range um, I get this all the time are you are you go with the guys in Chicago or are you with the guys in New Jersey and I'm like eh, not either one actually I live in New Mexico so I'm way down south uh, I work all through you know collaboration emails and, and uh, phone calls and traveling and uh, so uh, it became a, a part-time job for me. I would uh, I would work in the evenings, I work on the weekends. Just basically, every waking moment was kind of like pinball time if I didn't have to be at my other job. And so, basically, now it's just, it's just becoming my life. Uh, I'm, I've got friends that, that run a couple of uh, arcade bars in in my El Paso, Texas area. I, I work with 
with him to help keep 35 pinball machines running in his in his um, game rooms there. He's got these beautiful lineups, these long lineups of games that get the heck played out of them. Um, pinball's getting beat up all the time, and, and I just I just love it. I mean, I, I built a big shop next to my house. It's it's uh, where I go to hang out. I, I keep my collection there. I've got, I don't know, somewhere between 30 and 40 machines. I forget now. I've got them in other people's houses. My daughter has one in her apartment and, you know, things like that. But I, I just go out there, and the pinball's the one thing where I can just go out and play a little music, get underneath the hood in a game, and just lose myself, not worry about all the other things that bug you in life. You know, it's just, it's just cleansing for me. I love it. So... I didn't see your presentation really, and, and how did I get here? Well, you know, I came in a car with Lou and, and Dave. I think we determined that on the way. But you know, uh, more more importantly, I, I studied electrical engineering at New Mexico State University. I became an electrical engineer, so I'm, I had a lot of electrical stuff in my blood. Um, the, the mechanicals and electrical mixture really really appealed to me a lot. I just love pinball. I, I don't know how else to put that. That's it. I just love it. I was a Wizard of Oz enthusiast, my wife collector. She collected uh, plates and all these different music boxes and, and figurines and things. So we have that stuff strewn all over our house. Love Wizard of Oz stuff and that's gone all the way back to when her and I first met. I've been married for 34 years, known my wife for 36 years. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's something I've got a lot, of, a lot of time invested in too is my family and, and my pinball stuff. So I became a JJP customer Found out the Wizard of Oz was coming out of the pinball machine. My wife's like, we got to get one of those. got to have one. I told her I can't afford one of those. That's way too much money. And now look at them. It's, they're even worse. But um, so I, 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 they just keep going up and up and up. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm one of those guys in the company that just keeps saying, can't we sell them for cheaper? And then you see all the stuff that's in them. And yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, it's like the different kinds of cars. It really is. You know, if, you, if you're going to want to. Um, something you know like a Kia then you're gonna get you're gonna pay Kia prices if you want something like a Jaguar you're gonna have to pay Jaguar prices so it just it just it's a matter of how they're built what's put into them and I know that we we put a lot of effort and a lot of uh, good quality parts in into our games and then we just try and pack them with with you know feature filled uh, fun to play sort of thing so I became a JJP customer because I went and saw Jack talk, and I heard him say, "You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this pinball company, and I'm gonna do this uh, Wizard of Oz game." And 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 he was so energetic. I watched him talk after Gary Stern, and Gary Stern made me feel like we better go sit at the bar and you know share a beer and start crying. <laughs> Pinball's friggin' dead, man. There's no he, every every person ask a question. It's like, can you do this? What about wide bodies? Well, that would be really hard. Oh, we can't do that. Oh, that's not even possible. Oh, everything was so negative. And then Jack here comes and skips and jumps up onto the stage and says, let's see Gary do that. You know, and I'm like, wow. And I mean, they were literally back to back at the Texas Pinball Festival in 2011. Gary Stern and Jack Bernary. And I'm like, but this is more like what I had in mind. You know, so... Um, you know, made cheered me up about pinball. Saw the, the places we were going and things were going to get better. Made me happy to to uh, think of, of getting a Wizard of Oz game that I knew he was going to hit out of the ballpark and just put way too much stuff in there for the money that you're getting given. So I I got on board. I became a customer. I paid my sixty five hundred dollars. Ordered my Emerald City Limited Edition. Picked my game number seven forty seven sixty four. I got to get that right. Because it's my daughter's, my three daughters' birthday month, so Ju July, June, and April. So seven six four was was how I chose my number. Um, started making my payments. Got on the Wizard of Oz forum. Started talking with all the people there and trying to figure out what the game was going to look like. And, and just reading posts, it, it was very absorbing, very exciting to to get these little reveals of little things that were going to be in the game. And one day Jack puts out a message on the board and asks, you know, people to put in some kind of a, an idea for a slogan for the company and, you know, a, a, a trademark thing that he could put, put on, the, on the games and on his website and all that. And everybody was coming up with this, well, you think you know pinball, you don't know Jack, you know, and all these <laughs> things. I'm sitting there drinking coffee at my mom and dad's house, and, you know, my feet up on the table. And I, I knew from hearing him talk that the pinball had to be fun. The pinballs had to work, and he was very proud of all of his different hats that he wore in the pinball industry, from going from a, a repairman to a you know a tech and and all that to becoming a, 
a distributor to becoming a manufacturer and all the different things in between. So I, I just jotted down real quick, jack of all trades, master of fun. What do you think of that? <laughs> and uh, immediately he wrote something, you know, I like that one, you know, underneath it. And I was like, oh, that, that's cool. I got, I got the man's attention. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he was easy to, you could call a phone number and Jack would answer the phone number. You'd send an email, you'd get a reply. So I started, you know, bugging him about it. And, and uh, next thing you know, I became a part-time employee for the company. I literally went from 2011 seeing Jack give a seminar, talk right after Gary Stern, to in 2012, we had been talking and emailing back and forth and I'd asked him if there was you know, anything I could do to help. Like I know thousands of other people were doing and like I said, I don't know how I got so fortunate to be picked, but I, uh, I kept talking with him. He came back to Texas in 2012, the following year. He said, let's meet for dinner and we'll talk. He did his seminar the next day. He says, where's Butch Peel? Are you in the audience there? I waved and him. my family was with me. He says, that guy's gonna work for me. He's gonna start traveling around the country and you know, teaching people how to fix our games and do tech support and all that kind of thing. And uh, the next year I was giving the seminar at the Texas Pinball Festival in 2013. Jack wasn't there. So I started out as a, as a game writer uh, manual for the games. Uh, I wrote the manuals for the games. Um, Jack was trying to get me involved in tech support, but it was, the, it was so hard to get the games out and get them out in, into numbers and start shipping that uh, you know he wanted to get me involved sooner and he said he needed somebody to write game manuals. I said, well, you know, I'm one of those rare electrical engineers that actually can read and write too, so um, <laughs> you, I might be your guy. I, I can spell, I can use our, our, our language and I, I, you know, I, I'm a detail perfectionist, detail-oriented kind of guy. And I've worked with millions of different manuals, literally, and I've, I've seen them in all different walks of my other life and, and all of your personal life, and of course, a ton of them in pinball because I, I worked on pinball machines for 30 plus years myself. Well, after I bought mine and I started getting different brands and different eras, I learned how to, taught myself how to repair the, the circuit boards and do all the, the hand soldering and replacing things. I, I taught myself how to touch up and clear play fields and make stencils for cabinets and, and you know, repair and replace parts, fix, troubleshoot, all those different things. And, and a bunch of that was manuals. And you look at all the different eras and different manufacturers of manuals and you, you see things that work well. You see things that, man, if you just change that a little bit, it might work a lot better. And you see a lot of things that just like, wow, if that's so busy and messed up, I can't find anything on there useful on that page. And you kind of put all that together, and I had a, I had in my own mind, you know, I what a perfect manual would be. So it worked out pretty well, you know. Um, I, I started talking along with Jack, going to shows with him. He saw that, you know, I, I get, I can talk with customers real well. I, I can get up in front of people. I'm not, not uh, paralyzed or monotone, that kind of thing. So he, he let me start doing some seminars, and so you know, here I am, continuing that that tradition, and I really enjoy meeting new people, talking about pinball, talking about our games, talking about other people's games and, and the, you know, the past of pinball and, and helping fix games. Uh, I was at Cleveland a couple of weeks ago and helping a guy repair his Pharaoh machine. He was having problems with it. Just, I just love, love the whole thing about it. And I do some customer tech support. Jack's uh, hooked me up with a few customers where our system has kind of let them down a little bit. They fall through the crack for one reason or another. And uh, you know, I, I help kind of smooth things over. It's basically somebody comes in there and beats the hell out of the side of the, the hornet's nest, gets everything all excited, and then Dad, Jack says, "Oh, I'm going to bring Butch into this now," and everybody else backs up, and you know, I put my bee suit on, and then we go. But I, I have that kind of personality. I want to help people. I'm, I'm, I'm sincere. I'm a straight shooter. I'll tell you exactly, you know, what I think. If you ask me a question, don't don't be afraid of you know. The answer you, you're going to get this the, the most you know straight answer I can come up with because I I, I just don't see any any use in it. all my other jobs a couple of things a, a major taught me in the army one time one of our big counter ID systems I, I was involved with a jamming system he says bad news never gets better with age and the truth is always easy to tell it's it's the same every time you know and so that that's you know words to live by right there.
Another thing that's kind of come out of my documentation work is part naming and numbering. So every, every single time a, an engineer, mechanical engineer back in Chicago you know, picks a new part, draw, draws a, a bracket for something or a new piece of component of some other bigger assembly, they come to me for the part name and number. And I, we have a smart numbering system, so I go in and give it all the names and numbers. And that's just a, a, a concentrated effort on our company's part to keep things as consistent as possible. So we've, we've got people working that used to be in Williams, we've got people that used to be in Data East, all these different companies. And just, you know, you take a pop bumper for crying out loud, there's a super jets and jet bumpers and bumper this and, you know, so many different names for things, but just to try and keep things consistent throughout. And so that's one of my major responsibilities, um, kind of morphed into that myself. And of course now, as luck would have it, um, I've been trying to get to my minimum retirement age for my government job, and um, I was able to get a little bit of a shortcut, so uh, they offered an early retirement authority and a, a separation incentive pay, and so I actually applied for that and was approved, and I am actually retiring from my government job Thursday next week. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been involved all the time now, Thirty-two years and seven months of civil service, you know, serving my country and and being the army behind the army. We've done some great things. I've been some really cool places. I've been involved with some really important work. I've I know I've saved a few lives out there, and uh, it's something I'm really proud of. But you know, I'm 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 ready to move to the next chapter, and and I've I've got a five-year head start on this part-time thing. So it's been a real smooth smooth transition so far and I'm really excited about having more time to do the things that I really love and an alarm not going off at four in the morning anymore and you know knocking me out of bed in the dark and all that so um, yeah it's gonna be great and you know it, my other job has put some real perspective on things you know when I came into JJP and oh my gosh we've got all these pre-orders and everybody's wanting their games and they're calling Jack where's my Wizard of Oz and you know what's going on here I had just been in a like a six-year uh, program doing counter IED work for the U.S. Army, and we were we were keeping the bad guys from being able to blow up our troops by using remote-controlled radio frequency sort of things. We built a jammer that you could put in your vehicle and, and protect them. So, you know that stuff. We were doing teleconference with guys in tents in Afghanistan and Baghdad. Uh, every week and, and figuring out issues when we were working and testing things that were in our test vehicle today and out in a real vehicle with lives on the line the next day. And I'm like, what is the big deal here? It's pinball machines. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no one is going to die if they don't get their game next week. All right. So let's just kind of step back a little bit, take a breath. And, you know, pinball's hard. Jack will tell you over and over again. And every time. You know, Mike was up here, he's got laser pointer envy, by the way. He said he had a cheap red one of his, you know, he was admiring my green one, so I was having to hold the time. But, you know, it, it's just, it's a very difficult thing to do. It's all handmade. You know, people are, are really picky. They're paying a lot of money for their machines. It's a difficult thing to do to get all the pieces in one place, get them all put together correctly, and then, you know, get them shipped to where the guys are taking them down the road doing this all the way and get them to your house and have everything work perfectly. But we're very fortunate that our customers like to tinker with things. We're willing to get on the phone with you and help you. We write as manuals and things as best we can to help you with those sorts of things. And uh, I think we're, we're, we're doing pretty good. I, I, I like the look of the future. So about that dialed in manual. I, that was funny, Jack and I did a, a dialed in um, uh, show a while back uh, a little video that we did unboxing one and I saw on the glass somebody had taped something you know the, the dialed in manuals were back ordered <laughs> and it was hard to keep a straight face when I read that I'm like well I th and I told him at the end of the video I'll get your manual done as soon as I can uh, the first version of the manual came out pretty soon thereafter we're not ready to print it just yet because it doesn't have everything in it yet but the first version version 1.0 had 200 pages in it um, Ver second version is coming up going to be pretty soon and that'll have nearly 300 pages um, with all the different circuit boards and all the different printouts and uh, pinouts and things like that there's just a ton of work in there and so in my line of job you know what do I do I try to make it a little harder on myself so here's a Wizard of Oz 
you know, this was pretty well received when I put these kind of things in the Wizard of Oz menu. You know, black and white, everything called out really carefully. And this is all me re redoing a mechanical engineer's drawing and making it to where, to where it's easily, you know, identifiable parts and pieces and things for someone that's trying to take the game apart. And I found a strange um, parallel between our um, taking things apart and the way they're built originally there's kind of a disconnect with the engineers because the engineers draw something as, as an entire assembly like an entire pop bumper assembly and when part of that resides on the top of the play field and part of that resides on the bottom of the play field then it makes it a little bit difficult to document because the, the en engineers think that's all one piece and you can't just build a pop bumper in, in an entirety on a bench somewhere and come install it on a pinball machine you have to build the top by itself, the bottom by itself, and then at some point in the line, the play fields are up, and they put the top on, and play fields are down somewhere further down the line, and they put the bottom side in, and they connect the two together. Pieces, the ring and rod assembly, go through the play field. Lots of, lots of things like that happening in pinball. The things that go through the play field, through the cabinet, through the back box. So the way I wanted to, to document things worked really well with how the production works. So that's another part of the job that I'm, I'm kind of completing now is, is forming a bridge between engineering and production because I think like the production guys and I think like the engineer guys also. So I can kind of, you know, smooth some of the wrinkles that we've had out. But here's a black and white original Wizard of Oz. When I came into Hobbit, I decided to add a little more complexity. So I went in and took the, the Emmy's black and white drawings and and made, made them into color, so each part had its own color, and you could see the extents of things and, and what part of what you were seeing when you saw some of these um, two-dimensional views of it, breaking things out, you know, trying to, trying to make it as clear as I can. When dialed in manual now, I'm actually doing color exploded drawings, and so there's a lot more you know, cool things that are going on there, and I'm, and I'm working with a new when a new software package that we just bought that works directly with SolidWorks, and I'm going to be able to, in the future, take some of these uh, these three-dimensional views of the mechs themselves and maybe do animations and plug in PDFs inside the, the manual where you click on something and you can bring up a 3D thing that you could spin around and pull it apart and have it go back together. All kinds of cool things that work really well. And this, this is a, a good... A good example of you know a printed manual that still looks pretty good. The digital manual though has a whole different bunch of stuff that you have to think about with with you know hyperlinks and all that kind of stuff. So I'm working both of those and doing them at the same time, trying to make something you you're still proud to have as your you know a big old. You've seen some of the Waz or Hobbit manuals that you you can put on your coffee table and and they they feel like they're about a, a, as big as a cinder block or something. You know, but something that would be, be nice to, to have in, in the printed form as well as something really, really functional in the digital form, both on the game, where you can call up your manual on the game, and in, on your tablet or something where you can zoom in and, and, and manipulate things just with the finger movements. So how do I play dialed in? I get that question an awful lot. I'm glad you asked. Because, um, you know, you walk up to any pinball these days and, and uh, you look at the what's in front of you and you're like where do I even start with this and and then after the game's been out for a while you still read things I hear people saying on um, you know pin side you know I don't I don't think there's even a skill shot on dialed in what's a skill shot well there's a skill shot and there's a that's one of the cool things about our company too is is that you know we're not just trying to go through a lit lane on the top and you flip the flipper and change lanes and, and go through the right one ha a skill shot that that is not much skill in that so you know doing different things with the skill shots of Wizard of Oz. The Hobbit has so many different skill shots. Uh, dialed in has to have some too, you know it will. So, skill shots. Well, that first. If you look at all the inserts here in the shooter lane, they, they line up with these, uh, with these uh, verbiage here. You got a whole spider, a whole bonus X, a whole transit, a whole kilowatts, a whole drones, and the big points. And it's cycling through. These lights are cycling through as you're getting ready to launch your ball. When you launch the ball and get it into play here, when it hits one of the switches on here, um, whichever one this happens to be sitting on is the one that's actually held in your skill shot. So there's a timing thing too, to where you know you, you don't want to get the big points. If you can help, you want to get some of these these bonuses, especially like a whole bonus X, that's a very valuable one. Um, and depending upon what you shoot of these other things, the others might be valuable too. 
so the, the real skill shot is is similar to the the Rudy's hideout in Funhouse. You know, it's it's kind of hidden, but it's a it's a gentle shot that goes around this curve and, and drops into this kicker, this inline kicker right here. And if you look at the the play field, you can walk to the side of the game and look at it from the side. You can see that it shows a skill. It says on the play field and 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 arrows around in this direction to give you that that impression. So you drop the ball into there. That is a skill shot. To get a super skill shot, this guy's gonna pop out of here and drop down to your upper flipper. And when you when it hits your upper flipper, if you're able to shoot and make this upper left ramp over here, this lock ramp with station three, that's a super skill shot. Then you have a super duper skill shot <laughs> because if you drop the ball into here and it rolls down to your flipper, this hidden, completely hidden um, SIM card scoop is another super duper skill shot. So if you can shoot into there, that's even a little bit harder than just letting that ball drop to the further end of the flipper again. And then of course you have your no skill shot, which most everybody does. They jerk on the plunger and pull and shoot, it goes all the way around and drops in and returns to your right flipper and you get, basically it'll stop on one of these still when it hits the play field, but you don't get any of the extra points that you get by, by making some shots and dropping them into places they want to. It's kind of akin to dropping the ball into the pop bumpers on, on the Wizard of Oz. If you pull real hard on that plunger, it goes around and you're shooting for the, the high fours, you're brave. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so different modes in the game. Um, a lot of this ties into the back glass, you know, and the, and the LCD in the, in the back glass. But the modes, if you you start, you're going to hit the QED target, which is this little guy on this left and right, you know, moving target here in the center of the play field. The QED is, you know, from my old army days and the acronyms, we love our acronyms too, and that is sort of an acronym. He's the quantum electric dude. That's what QED stands for. <laughs> and it's, little, it's written on his cap and everything. So, um, so you hit him to charge up the phone. When you hit him once, he'll move across to here. Hit him again, he'll move back. And that pretty much gets the phone to, to 100%. It may take a little more than that as the game progresses, but that's a, the easy one to start the first mode. When the phone is fully charged, there's RGB LED borders all the way around this phone and they'll turn green and start, you know, cycling around to get your attention and tell you to, to shoot it into the phone scoop, which is right underneath there. So you shoot the, fart, uh, the, the smartphone <laughs> scoop. Yeah, uh, Freudian slip there, I guess. But sh shoot that smartphone scoop. Slow down a little bit, maybe it'll be easier, right? Just start a mode. So drop it into there, and what's going to happen, there'll be an incoming call, and you know, the person will come up on the screen, like you saw in Davis' presentations, and, and one of those guys will start telling you, you know, something's happening, and you look up on the screen, you'll see, you know, tornadoes coming in, or sinkholes, or meteors flying, and then you need to make some shots to to uh, finish the mode and those will be indicated by some of the inserts on here and they're generally like a, a, a kaleidoscope thing kind of moving changing color purple green pink white you know blues all that kind of thing and sometimes they mo move around so you need to look at all these arrows and see where you're supposed to be hitting and it may change keeping that in mind the the main thing to to get to success on dialed in and people i saw the, doing this quite a bit in the beginning was you know, they think they're trying to save the city. And dialed in, you're trying to destroy the city. Well, actually, you're learning how to use your phone, and in the process, the phone controls all this stuff in the city, and so it's gonna destroy the city. So your, your objective is to leave the city a smoldering pile of rubble. Um, that, that, if you wanna do well points-wise. Uh, so, so forget about trying to save things. When you see, you make a shot and a, a meteor takes out a whole building, yay, that's a good thing, really, believe me. <laughs> you, you'll see. So the, the modes are random, but they are ordered. So there's a group of, of modes and they're kind of tiered. If you think about the cityscape, there's a lot of things in the foreground, there's things in the middle, and there's things in the background, and it kind of moves around and takes you to different perspectives and looks down on it. But there are things in the foreground that they want you to destroy so that you can see some of the stuff in the back. So that some of the earlier modes will be things that evolve some of the buildings in the foreground, and then the later modes will, will um, come in behind them and do things to other areas of the city. Two ball multi-balls. So when you 
there's a lot of things happening with the bob targets and the the uh, trap door back here they're tied together this little alley up this back way here is, is you know crazy bob's uh, phone store so you're gonna hit the bob targets here and then you're gonna shoot the ball up here when the bob targets are hit the bob bob's trap door will open up here and you can shoot the ball into there and the ball will travel back under here a la fun house and, and be ready to, to pop out of the phone scoop scoop and um you you'll start a mode or start a, a a special kind of uh, playing session there. One of them, the first time you go through there and hit hit the bob targets, all three of them, shoot the trap door. First time you're gonna get one of these three things. It's either emoji overload, which the emojis start popping up on the screen and they're just multiplying like crazy. Hit the shots that are indicated on the play field and the emojis get wiped out. Um, and they'll kind of run from the ball too. You'll see the emojis all in one corner over here and if the ball moves over in this direction, they'll all scatter away from it move to the other side of the screen and fill up this area and if the ball goes on that area the side of the play field they'll run from that side and run to the other but if you start making the shots they'll quit um, multiplying so fast and of course some of the shots are worth more than the others and they wipe out more emojis than uh, others and of course if you drain them your ball then the emojis just take over the whole screen and, and uh, it, it gives you a, a, a mode total at the end the other one a second one of these three is a selfie time it's gonna there's a camera in the lower portion of the of the back box there. Um, the selfie mode, in different shots in the game will take a picture of you. So you know you start hearing the kaching kaching, kind of like on the white water when the you've got taking pictures with Bigfoot. Um, the same sort of sounds in, in this game, and you'll know you're you're having pictures of you showing up on the screen up there. Um, the selfie time has a has a little label on the bottom. You can go into customization in the game menus and you can put whatever you want to appear on the bottom of all your selfie photos. You can enter that. So you can photobomb somebody that's doing that and you look over their shoulder and the face recognition stuff will sometimes pick your face rather than theirs and you can make faces over their shoulder. Just, you know, pinball's a social game. It's not made to be played in mom's basement fighting some guy in New Jersey or something like that. You're supposed to be there cheering and or jeering the, the guy that you're playing with and you know, make, making it a fun thing. So the, the selfie, selfie time's kinda cool in that, in that regard. So make some faces and, and have a good time with it. A lottery frenzy, a lottery ticket will pop up on the screen and you need to let go of the flipper button and scratch off the lottery ticket with your hand like that. That's how you, you, you see what's under there and, and score the points on it. If you just let it sit there, you know, you, it'll, it'll stay blank and, and you won't get near as many points. But as soon as you see the lottery ticket and you, and you hear the, the call out, you can get up there and scratch off the thing and try and keep from losing your ball at the same time. Second time you do the bob targets and, and into the trap door, you'll get a bonus X increase, very valuable thing. And then the third time, you'll get uh, one of these three multi balls. So monkey wrench multi ball is shooting this ramp here and the Betty figure back in the back corner is going to be raising her arm diverter up and down and you're trying to get it past her arm and hit this switch on the ramp here and, and, and score. Otherwise she diverts you onto the upper play field and you drop either in that hole or up onto the play field up there. She's trying to time a ramp shot to get it past her. Those are the jackpots. <laughs> and then QED multi-ball is, you know, obviously going to hit this little guy here on the moving target thing back and forth. And um, I believe the jackpots there are, are on the in the theater. Is that right, Dave? Oh, oh. So uh, pop quiz, Dave. Uh, I'm sorry you were sleeping, but uh. no, no. <laughs> I like my homework at home. Oh, dog, uh, my dog ate the homework. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of the the jackpots are tied though to the uh, the theater. They can put anything they want. It's kind of, it's kind of like a mini um, pinball 2000 play field. Uh, up here and they can make a 3D looking thing and they you know, virtually anything they want to put up there literally they can put up. So um, QED multi-ball is, is smacking the moving target guy around. Um, drones gone wild multi-ball is going to uh, um, have a, a shot over here to the side that then uh, I think puts a, something in the in the theater also but you're you know shooting the ball into this drones area and hitting these switches and there's a target back in here for your uh, jackpots and then I think it'll bring a super jackpot up and put an item inside the the uh, theater for a short period of time after you hit this uh, target up in here and you can you can get a lot of points there and those will increase it the more you can hit them. 
hurry up some virtual targets. So the drone package delivery complete. All these, there's a, a package delivery progress here of a series of RGB LEDs that'll be building up. And that's a ball dropping into this area. There's a switch in the rubber here. There's a switch in the rubber here. And the ball's gonna bounce around in there. If each one of those hits is gonna trigger the magnet, which is gonna fling the ball around. Sometimes pull it up, pull it back down again, launch it up into here, send it out to the side. And uh, every time it hits one of these switches here, it's gonna increase that package delivery. When it gets complete, you uh, will see a, um, a package floating down into the theater. It's like a, on a parachute, and uh, you shoot into the theater to claim that award. And again, got to hit it, get it before it all, all hits all the way to the ground. So it's a time sort of thing. Left ramp and theater shot. When you shoot the left ramp, it's going to come around and uh, feed your flipper here. Shoot into the theater and, and pick up a, a hurry up for that. First time you do that, you. Station three qualify, which oh, lights this ramp for lock, and I, I believe the trap door for lock also. Um, third time you do that, you get a virtual train bash target in the the uh, theater. So what it looks like a couple of doors sitting there, and you smack the, the door with the ball, and it dents once. And they you know they grab the ball. There's a magnet up inside here, so they can act like the ball hits something solid and drops back down, hits the second time and smashes a little more and you see the door deformed a little more. A third time maybe it breaks them and then the fourth time you go all the way through and, and get, get a bash target in the theater. Very cool thing. Because none of these are on the game, right? These, bat, these uh, virtual targets and virtual spinners and virtual things, there's none of those in, anywhere else on the game. But when you've got a, a cool tool like this in the middle, you can do, do some really neat things. So, there's a spider target here on the end. You see the spider here and him climbing on the ramp up here on one of the signs. And you hit that target um, and then make a theater shot. A, a, a spider will come down on a web and, and be dancing there in the theater for you to hit. Do that um, three times and you will get a virtual spinner in the, the, uh, um, in the theater. So now instead of using the magnet to stop the ball, you're going to let it go through and however you know, as it goes through, they're trying to gauge that, of course, but it's difficult to do. But you're going to see a spinner, a virtual spinner that goes around and around. You get points for every time it goes around. Uh, three drone targets. So that's the drone target is over here on the edge. You hit the drone target there, and it brings a, in the theater, it brings a, uh, a, a little drone flying around, buzzing around. You shoot him and do that three times, back and forth, hitting this target, hitting in the, in the theater in the, in the amount of time allotted and you'll get a virtu virtual captive ball up inside here. So now you've got like a Newton ball up there where you can hit the ball and it'll send a, 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 a virtual ball up to, to knock a target behind it and, and give you some extra points. Pretty cool too. And then last but not least is the QED targets and hitting this, the theater. When he, he's hit, there'll be a kilowatt bonus show here in the, uh, in the theater and you can shoot up into there in a hurry up fashion and, and hit that after you've hit QED. Do that three times and then you're going to get a line of infinite virtual inline drop targets. So the next time you hit the theater, it, the magnet will grab the ball as if it hit a th hit the, the, uh, the first drop target. You see the target fall, the ball will drop back down, the one will come up behind it and you just have this series of inline drop targets and you can hit those over a time period and uh, you know, score some big points too. Big Bang, um, you saw the effect on Dave's thing. It's very cool, lights up all the, the inserts and, and makes a big, you know, kind of like a, an atom bomb explosion kind of effect on the screen. Um, very effective when you're in mode, but you need to, there's a couple of targets right here. You're gonna hit those, they say light Big Bang on them. A couple of hits on there will light the Big Bang target, which is, is lit with this insert here. And it's a target way back up in this area hit the Big Bang target when it's lit and you're going to get about 50,000 points and then using one of Dave's acronyms there and, and you're out of mode and not, not anything going on just in your main play kind of thing. So hit these little targets here, hit that target up there and you get 50,000 points. Every time you hit it, it'll be worth more points. However, during a mode, if you've got that thing qualified and it's lit up and you can start a mode, then you're going to, hitting Big Bang then, hitting that big target up here is going to 
complete the mug instantly. So you, everything will be uh, collected. You get all the credit for making all the shots and all that with just hitting that big bang target. So very powerful, uh, kind of like a smart bomb in some of the old games and things where you could slap the, the, the ball shooter button. Um, very cool thing. So I kind of rushed through mine a little bit trying to help catch up with Jack. I know he's got an airplane to catch. Uh, it's world traveler's got three more places to be tomorrow, I'm sure. But this was my first time to Vancouver. I've, I've had a great time meeting with you all. I'll, I'll be available all day today and the rest of the day. And then tomorrow we'll get up in the morning and head back to the U.S. But uh, if there's anything you want to ask, any, anything you'd like to talk about, I love doing it. love meeting new people. I can go as geeky as you want or we can go as high level as you want. I, I can get way down in the weeds with you if you want. So I, I love talking about pinball. Thank you again, Tommy, for having me. And thank you for coming. Okay, so uh, I, I really appreciate uh, you coming out, Butch, and I gotta tell you right now, uh, you're incredibly passionate, and I can see why you're working with Jersey Jack. I, I'll tell you right now, that's just it's amazing, and uh, uh, I'm thrilled that you came out, and I want you to come back again next year, so. Yeah. There you have it folks, that was Butch Peel from Jersey Jack Pinball. If you guys enjoyed this episode, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, we'll see you next time.